Good afternoon and good evening, everyone. This is Financial Literacy 101. I'm your host, Ross World. And today we'll be talking about short-term versus long-term money. Also, we'll be talking about passive income and also residual income. What are the differences between the two? So um, here's my analogy. Here's my example of long-term versus short-term money. So I'm going to show you a huge difference here between short-term and long-term money. Now, this is actual real cash, you know. So let me let me first give you the what I, the fake money I always show you guys. I'm going to show you the real money. So we understand that that is a fake $100 bill with the Chinese writing on that people flash, okay? The Chinese writing, okay. So that's that's fake versus the real one. Okay, versus the real one. Okay? And you know, this money here is all real, okay? But this is short term. This is short term. This really, I won't say it doesn't mean anything because if you invest this the right way, you can make a lot of money, okay? You can actually get a lot of return on your money if you invest this the right way. Okay, so this is, I'll just use $100 bill, so I'm not current all that cash. This is short term, okay? This is short term, and this, is long term this is long term so that's the difference between the two this right here you can blow this right here takes time to accumulate interest but if you take out a hundred dollars and you put it under your mattress there is no accumulation in value you this hundred dollars will not get this this hundred dollars won't be more tomorrow or the next day or ten years if anything this will be less than because of inflation. Now, we understand that the new rates of inflation are 3%. They're at 3%. So this $100 will decrease in value every year by 3%. Now, if you invest in real currency, if you invest in real money, this is one ounce of U.S. silver. This is one ounce of U.S. silver. And every year, the amount of silver goes up. Every year, the amount of silver goes up. Yes, this is real silver. And right now, I didn't even look at the prices. I may, you might, I may want to look at the prices, but right now, it's accumulating. Okay, it's accumulating. So, short-term money doesn't accumulate in value. Okay, that's the money that you run to the ATM and you and you need to make a purchase on. That's the money you run to the ATM and you need to make a purchase on something. But some of you may have hundreds, if not thousands of dollars walking around acting like you have money. No, 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 no. You have money that you're going to absolutely um, lose and the value of your money is not making you money. Most of my money stays in the bank. Like here, here again, I know I'm peddling my little t-shirts here, but this is why I love my first slogan is my money makes money okay and then on the front it has learn money and be inspired the reason why i picked that is because when you learn money and how money works you become inspired or you should come inspired about making more more money more options see a lot of times people like to believe when you make more money you have more problems i understand the rap song and that's slightly true because when you become a millionaire billionaire what do they always have? Lawsuits. Because people know they have money. So any little thing they try to get sued on. So essentially, yes, more money, more problems. But with that money, you have more options. Look at Bill Gates. He has the Bill Gates and was it Melody Gates? I, don't, I forgot his wife's name. Excuse me. But they have a foundation. They go around helping people, essentially. I know Warren Buffett gave him like $40 billion just to you know, help their foundation. They're using their own, um, own money and other billionaires' money in order to do this. So that's what we need to understand. When people flash you money on TV, have you noticed rich people don't flash money? They flash houses because it's so big you cannot, you cannot see it. They may drive a nice car or get driven in a nice car because some people just don't want the liability. Like, what if I crash? You know, they may drive an old school or something like that. And then they have jets. They're not driving around on the street. They're they're helicoptering to, from one place or another or the jet. And yes, I know I'm talking about the filthy rich. But even your hey, Miss Curly Girl, good evening. Thanks for joining in today. 
But that is a huge difference between long term money. We we love to see we we love to see people flash cash. We love it. We love when people that oh man yeah yeah I'm balling I'm balling I'm balling right no no I want to see your bank account. I want to see if you balling today. <laughs> you looking my <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the comments. I, I don't refuse any positive comments. Um yes. I do look a bit spiffy here. Um, my name is Charles. Yes. Charles the third. No, anyway, I'm kidding, guys. But here's the thing. I want your mind to change the way you think about money. Okay? You need to have money intelligence. You need to have financial intelligence. And we get excited when we see real hundred dollars. And again, fake money. The Chinese writing on it. Real money. Okay? And I want you to get excited when you see stuff like this. This this is not exciting, is it? You know why? We don't glorify investments. We do not glorify investments. Okay? So short term and long term. Silver, gold, platinum, and palladium. Long term money. It's going to increase in value over time. That is what analysis and statistics show. When you do the metrics, that is what it shows. That the money that doesn't, it's not flashy. You don't see nobody flashing silver and gold coins. They're like, oh yeah, I'm balling. Because we don't glorify it, but we love cash. This was meant, see, these dollars, when you take it out, this was meant to spend. This money was meant to spend. This money was not meant to be invested because guess what? If it was, you'll never see it. It would be in your bank account. It would be accumulating interest. It would be in your investment account. Hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. So let's get into passive and residual income. Now, of course, I have to give you my definitions of residual income. And this definition of residual income it's coming from investopedia.com. You always got to cite your source. Sometimes, most times I do. So, residual income is the amount of net income generated in excess of the minimum rate of return. Alternatively, in personal finance, residual income is the level of income that an individual has after the deduction of all personal debts and expenses have been paid. So, in a matter of very small words, residual income is the money left over after you didn't paid everything off, after you didn't paid everyone off. That is your residual income. Okay. So let's not get that, you know, misinterpret with passive income. Cause some, I've, I've talked to some people, they're like, well, your residual income and they don't even know where residual income is. It's no fault to them. And until you are brought to the age of knowledge in those areas, then we always make these mistakes in financial terms. That's just like when you're talking about shares, right? If you have a stock of Microsoft, then you have a stock or a share. But if you have 100 shares of Microsoft, most people say, yeah, I have 100 stocks. There's are some monies. You, It's not improper, but a more proper term would be, yes, I have 100 shares of Microsoft, okay? Because a stock and a share are the same thing. But when you're talking about plural, we're talking about shares, okay? So basically, residual income is the money left over after you pay all your bills and debts. Okay. Now, let's talk about what passive income is. Now, this is what you should try to strive for. And this definition, which I checked it, is cool. I know it's from Wikipedia. So this definition is from Wikipedia. Passive income is... Income that requires little to no effort to earn and maintain. It is called progressive passive income when the earner expends little effort to grow the income. Examples of passive income include rental income and business activities in which the earner does not materially participate, meaning that you could be a private investor inside of a business and you just fronted money and you're waiting for your ROI, your return on your investments. So that's passive income. You make an investment, you sit, you wait for the money to start pouring in. Rental income. You buy a rental property, you, you, you set up a management company to handle it so you're not even touching it, then you're waiting for the money to pour in. 
But I'm going to give you, and this has come from bankrate.com. That's bankrate.com. There are 10 versions of what passive income is, and it's spot on. This is the 10, and I like these 10. Now, the first one is, I wouldn't enlist it at first, but hey, it is what it is. Number one is selling information products. Selling information products. Um, information products can, can deliver an excellent income stream because you make money easily after the initial out loud time. And basically, um, it's a strategy for accumulating passive income because you are establishing information about a product. And then from that product, you may have a piece of the pie where you're receiving that passive income. Okay. Rental income. Rental income. Investing in rental properties is an effective way to earn passive income, but it often requires more work than people expect. Of course, even though their rental income is a form of passive income, originally and initially, you might have to do more work than what is required or what you may think it is, right? But once you set it up and either you want hands-on or you hire a management company to have hands-on, so that way you have a third party working on your behalf, that way you're not worried about, you know, you're not attending to the tenants every day. You might have other businesses you may need to attend to. So the rental property is just accumulating and um, giving you passive income. Opportunity, it says here, is to earn passive income from rental properties. Um, one of the writers here says you must determine three things. How much return you want on your invest investments, the property's total costs and expenses, the financial risk of owning the property. OK, um, when it comes to rental property, you have to be very careful about the area, the structure. Well, first of all, the structure of the building, the condition of the building. You have to get an inspector, you know, make sure everything is working like it's supposed to work. Then the neighborhood, the neighborhood is one of the most important things after you check in the integrity of the building, the neighborhood, what surrounds the neighborhood, what type of neighborhood is it? Is it a uh, lower class? Is it middle class or is it high class? Okay, because that's going to dictate a lot of your income. And matter of fact, that may also dictate the, the condition that your property may stay in. Because we understand that middle class Americans take care of property better than lower class Americans. Now, this is just the statistics. Okay, I grew up in the ghetto. I grew up in the hood. And unfortunately, I have to say according to my opinion and my perception of what I saw, then those properties were ran down by the people who lived in them. It wasn't like some special group came in and tore down the properties. I remember um, going over to my aunt's house. They had rebuilt these uh, buildings. Now we call, you know, we call them projects, call it the hood. But these buildings look glorious. They look good. They had fresh paint, uh, fresh molding, you name it. Everything was fresh, fresh, fresh. After about two or three months, it looked like someone came through and just spray painted everything, trash all outside. It, it was just demolished. It looked, it looked like the buildings were there for 20 or 30 years. So statistics show that middle class and high class take care of property better than the lower class. And I don't know if that's not understanding being appreciative of low income housing or the value of property. Or, or any of the above, I simply don't know. I simply don't know. But what I know is if I buy property, I want to make sure those properties stay in good condition. So I will be catering to the middle class and to the higher and to the um into high class. That's just for me. Another form of passive income is affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing. And you see it all over YouTube, where I may have commercials on my channel, and either you skip them. Or you let them play, hopefully let them play, because when you let them play and the advertisers see and the algorithms of Google AdSense see that you have watched the video, I accumulate more money through affiliate marketing and advertisement. Because with those, again, it's passive income because I don't do anything. I don't do anything when commercials run across my channel and the other million YouTubers channel, they're getting paid for that. All right. Peer-to-peer -peer lending. A peer-to-peer -peer, peer -peer lending loan is a personal loan made between you and a borrower facilitated through a third-party intermediary such as Prosper.com and LendingClub.com, which I've told you this 
uh, plenty of times. Now, to cut the risk, you need to do two things to cut your risk when you're doing peer-to-peer -peer lending. Diversify your lending portfolio by investing small amounts over multiple loans at Prosper, and minimum investment per loan is $25. So meaning you can go in and start with $25 and have like, say if I want to invest it $300. So I will do um, risky, um, middle, or moderate loans, and then I'll do safe loans. And that will really cover my risk if, if someone doesn't pay out in the riskier loans. Analyze historical data on the prospective borrowers to make informed picks. So basically do your research. What I always tell people, do your research. Now, the risk they have listed here, it takes time to master the metrics of peer-to-peer of, uh, -peer lending. So it's not entirely passive because you're investing in multiple loans. You must pay close attention to payments received. Whatever you make in interest should be reinvested if you want to build income. So I, like I told you before, I did Prosper.com and I might I, and I made quite a bit of money. Um, don't ask me why I haven't been doing it lately. I, I should just drop maybe two hundred dollars in peer to peer lending again, um, maybe on some moderate or or highly safe. But quite frankly, if I have one hundred dollars to lose, then I'm going to invest that hundred dollar in, in the riskier loans, because those riskier loans, man, they can be anywhere from 10% um, to 25%. So look at the amount of money you'll make on $100, okay? But in saying that, you can also lose that money. All right, moving right along. Number five, dividend stocks. Now we know dividend stocks, the only thing you need to go is go out and buy dividend stocks, either through Stash, um, M1 Finance, uh, Robinhood. Uh, what's the other one? acorns dividend stocks you just buy and every three to four months they send you dividends they deposit dividends inside your account and what i like to do is i like to reinvest my dividends okay i like to reinvest my dividends and with stash they're starting to start um integrate their platform a little bit better with an um, option of reinvesting your dividends now with wealthfront which um, a good portion of funds I have in there, they automatically re reinvest your dividends as well as do tax harvesting, right? And basically tax harvesting is when they look how taxes are being um, accumulated and they wait during certain periods of times to invest your money so you pay the lowest taxes, right? They're really looking at trends and analytics and to say, okay, well, if we invest this money right here, right now, he's going to pay a higher percentage of taxes. So what they may do is when you deposit money in Wealthfront, they hold the money and they wait. They say, okay, okay, okay. Now let's invest the money because he's going to pay the lowest tax amount dealing with the amount he's trying to invest. Dividend stocks, everyone, we understand that. You just wait around and you wait for those dividends and you reinvest, you reinvest them if you want to, or you can just cash out. Savings account, okay? You always hear me talk about high yield savings account, right? I always try to look for savings account. There are 2% and bigger, 2% and larger, because the closer you get to inflation, it's the closer your money holds its value. But with a savings account, you just put money in and you wait, and the money accumulates every every month, every quarter. Like right now with Sterling Bank, they're the parent bank. Sterling Bank is the parent bank, but the subdivision bank is Brio Direct. Brio Direct, that's what bank I am now. I transferred my money from Bonesco, USA. That was giving me like 2.47%. And then they dropped it like 1.8. I'm like, no, I moved my money. I don't have any loyalty to banks. If you know anything about me i don't have any loyalty to the banks i want to put my money where the money is i want to put my money where the money is meaning whoever gives me the highest interest then that's where i want to go to and a lot of you a lot of you have loyalty to banks do not i repeat do not have loyalty to banks that is my opinion okay that is what i think do not have loyalty to banks i wouldn't do it because they don't have loyalty to you it's not like oh i've been with this bank so long and you know, this bank has been good to me. What has the bank done for you? It gave you free notary stamps? What else? What else? You hold your money there. What, has, what else has it done? It hasn't done nothing for you. Your bank has not done nothing for you. 
What's on, Davey? What's going on, Davey? Anyway, let's move right along. Reds. Reds. Now, you know, I'm in, I'm inside of a red as well. And reds are real estate investment trusts. I talk about them all the time because I invest with Fundrise. Okay. I was putting away $250 a month in Fundrise, but I recently decreased that amount to 100 because I'm trying to do something else with my money with that extra 150 and that's a lot of times with investing um when you have an opportunity to open up or you want to open up another opportunity you may have to reduce you may have to decrease the amount of investments that you have but I like to keep those going because that's another form of passive income I love making money doing absolutely nothing isn't that amazing isn't that amazing? See, money is terrific. Money is wonderful because if you know what you're doing with money, then you understand what this is. This is passive income. Okay, okay. If you're just tuning in, I'm going to go over a brief description of long-term money and short-term money. This is a real $100 bill. Okay, not your YouTube fakes. This is short-term because you know why? This is a note. That's all this is. This is a bill, okay? That is all that is, okay? This is short-term money because the reason why I say that, if I hold it here on my table for 10 years, this $100 will lose value every year by 3%. That's inflation. This $100 will lose 3% every year. This one ounce of real silver Okay, a real silver will not lose its value. What it's going to do is, as silver become more rare of a precious metal, it will increase. We're talking about gold, silver, platinum, and palladium, the four top precious metals. Over the course of time, they will increase in value as they become more rare. Also, they will increase in value as they um, find more uses with silver. Take, for instance, solar panels. Take, for instance, solar panels. They use a great amount of silver to make solar panels. That's why solar panels cost so much money because they're using a rare precious metal inside of the solar panels. All right, moving right along, guys. Bonds. Bonds are another form of passive income. And I've been telling you this from day one. From day one, you know, Bonds, you just buy bonds and you wait and they accumulate interest and they are worth more than what they were prior to. And yes, depending on what type of bond you have, they range from anywhere from 1% to 5%. And some of you are like, well, 1% ain't nothing. 1% isn't any type of money. And I was like, uh, if you give me $100 and I invest into a bond at 1%, not 10%, 1%, did you make any money? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. See, it amazes me that people don't like low returns. The key word in that is return. You have money in your return, ROI, return of investment. You invested something and you had a return. Okay, a positive return, not a negative return because you don't... It, there's, I don't think, I wouldn't say a negative return because I don't believe in a negative return because if it's negative, then you didn't get any sort of return on your money. So you need a positive return of investments. So bonds actually do that with their, their interest rate of one to 5%. Here's another one. This is basically rental property. Rent out a room in your house. A lot of people are doing Airbnb. See, if you have a home, and you had a fully furnished basement, a fully uh, finished basement. Your, your basement is finished, meaning, um, you know, the drywall is up. No one's going down there and you see two by fours and four by fours. And, you know, no, your basement is finished. That would be prime real estate for you to rent out your basement. Rent out your basement. Now, say, for instance, you don't want nobody to be standing in your basement for years on end. You're like, I don't want nobody in my darn basement all the, all the darn time. So what happens, you can actually list your basement on Airbnb, especially, I don't know, back in D.C., we have basement where that basement had its own access door. So you'll let them know, hey, here's your key, right? 
And a, a lot of us, you will want to do this. Um, anytime you have Airbnb, you I would love a pin code. I don't want to give somebody a key because then you got to change out the locks or you have to go and change the pins. So I would just get an electronic lock. I would give someone that code. Okay, I would give someone that code. And then when they leave, I can just go in and change the lock. Okay, and I believe Slage have a, I used to have that in my, on my old house. I had a Slage keypad and Slage is spelled, let's see, a Slodge or Slage, S-C-H-A-L-G-E. That's the company I went with. They're pretty good. But anyway, I used that um, electronic pin code and, you know, we would just have our own code or the same code. And then when guests come in and we wasn't home, we would give them that code. And when they left, we deleted that code. Okay. We delete that guest code um, off the master roster that you'll have on your app or something like that. So renting out a room in your home or renting out your basement is a great way to have some passive income because it requires nothing from you. Okay. You may have them to sign a short term lease or go by the Airbnb code or something of that nature. And you're making money. Okay. And you're making money. Moving right along. Now, here's the risk of renting out a room in your home, according to um, bankrate.com. You don't have a lot of financial downside here, though. Letting strangers stay in your house is a risk. That's a typical of most passive investments. Tenants may deface or even destroy your property, for example. That's true. And of course, if you're going to rent out your basement, you don't want them to have access to the upstairs. So, um, a room is a room or a home is a home. And even you may have like a little burner that they can cook downstairs, maybe some pots and pans. So they don't even have to come upstairs to use. Cause you don't, some place you're renting out your basement or a room. You don't want them to be all in your house. I mean, at least for me and nine times out of 10, when I have used Airbnb, there has been nobody in that place. There has been nobody in that home at all. Here's another one. I necessarily don't like this one. But it says advertise on your car, right? So meaning you go to an establishment and you say, hey, um, how much would you guys pay me if I advertise your business on my car? And some of them may say, oh, we'll advertise 20, we'll give you $25 a day. And then they come out with this long advertisement to go across both sides of your car. You're like, I, I mean, granted, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If that $25 is going to help you out, then you should do it, right? Because you can't see the advertisements inside your car. You can't see the advertisement or marketing inside your car. You can't see it. So if that money is going to help you out, then do it. You can go to your, you can go to your local establishments and say, hey, um, I hear you guys got a great business here. Um, I wouldn't mind advertising um, using my car. I drive around all day long, and that would be great advertisements. Um, for you guys, you talk to the owner, you talk to maybe a high level manager and you say, you know, I'm just trying to figure out how much you guys will pay me. And I will come every week um, to let you guys know I'm still advertising. I'm still, you know, driving around town, letting people see the advertisement. That could be a, a really good way of making money. And quite frankly, you may not even get taxed on it. Right. They may, they may just pay you that twenty five, fifty or even one hundred dollars under the table. Think about it like this. If you can make one hundred dollars. Just by having advertisements on your car, right? And that doesn't really bother you, because especially if you have a lot of bumper stickers on your car, you're advertising, okay? You're advertising for free. But that's why when you go to, uh, what's that place? Uh, when you go to like get your oil change, and they put the little oil thing, and they usually have the company. When someone walks past your car, they see that you got your oil change at Mining Key or Jiffy Lube or someplace like that. It's a small form of advertising. They didn't have to put that on there. They didn't have to put Miney Key or Jiffy Lube. They didn't have to do that, right? But they did because they understand when people see it or even when you see it, you're like, oh, I'm going to go back to Jiffy Lube. Or I'm gonna go. It's like self-advertisement. They're advertising back to you. Advertisement is subliminal, right? When you see a commercial, like right now, I'm hungry, right? I haven't, I haven't eat. I'm hungry. So if I see a commercial... And it's like, oh, we have this nice full salad at Pandora Bread. Or we got the smoothie at, I don't know, what's that place? Juicy or I don't know. But when they advertise in food and you're hungry, your subliminal messaging, the commercial can go off. And then maybe an hour later, a friend or a loved one come home. You're like, hey, let's go. Let's go get some food. You know what? Right now, I'm feeling some outback steak. I'm feeling some outback steak right now. And you just saw the outback 
food and they showed the steak glistening with juices and salt and pepper and garlic i'm getting hungry just thinking about it. anyway all right so that's the difference between passive and residual income short term and long term money so let me get into some to your comments here i haven't forgot about you guys uh, thank you, Ms. Curly Girl. I see that you've been busy. I, I do appreciate your assistance and your help. And she has been the only one, actually. I got 13 people in the chat. Elise, guys, tell me where you're from. Uh, let me know if you have any businesses out there. This channel is not a lecture channel. This channel is an interaction between you and I. So if you have um, a business or you're about to start a business, there may be someone in the chat room who can help you out or you guys can interlock. You guys can be uh, business partners. There's, there's plenty of things that you guys can do um, other than hear me run my mouth. I, I don't mind if you advertise yourself at all, okay? I don't mind if you advertise yourself at all, okay? So, um, let's see here. Hey, what's up, Sheila? Great day. Wishes to everyone. Wishes to you as well. Let people know where you're from. Let people know the business that you're in. If you have any questions about um, savings account, investments, um, real estate, Whatever it may be, please let me know if I can answer it. I'll answer it. If I can't, then I won't, right? I can't answer a question that I don't know about. But um, today's topic was about short-term and long-term money. And when you look at your, and I hate to talk about rappers because most rappers look like me. Um, and I hate to talk about entertainers because a lot of big entertainers look like me, but they show you money. And, and short-term money is not money that looks like this. This is short-term money. This is what short-term money looks like, right? What is this $100 doing for me right now? What is it doing for me? What am I going out and buying that is going to help me increase income? What, what is it going to do? Am I going to buy a precious painting that I'm going to spend this money on? Am, am, I, am I going out and am I going to buy a precious painting that is going to increase in time because we know that certain arts, whether it be a statue or, or a picture or a piece of art, so to speak, over time, they increase in value. The older they are, the more, uh, the more they're worth, essentially, the more they're worth. But you have to buy the right pieces of art. So just having cash, Shooting cash and flourishing cash and throwing cash, that's short-term money. That sort of money is meant to be spent when you go out. Short-term money, okay? Short-term money. Now, again, um, I only have silver because that's the only thing I can afford. This is long-term money. This is not flashy. This is not flashy. This is long-term money, okay? This is real one-ounce American silver. But this is long-term money. This money is just going to sit in my safe. It's going to accumulate in value over the course of time. So I advise you to go out and invest in uh, silver, gold, platinum, palladium, which are the top four precious metals. Now, there's some other precious metals that are more, uh, they're worth more than silver. But silver right now is only $17 to $18 an ounce. Well, you know what? Let me give you some accurate numbers. Let me get some accurate numbers. Let's see, cost of silver per ounce. Let's look at that. I can give you some actual numbers, so I'm not just uh, speaking out. So right now, silver per ounce is seventeen dollars and fifty-two cents. Okay. Uh, per gram is point um is fifty-six cents, and then uh, silver per kilo is five hundred sixty-three dollars. Okay. So that is where we are right now. And then another one says that silver spot price is $18. So like I said, between $17 and $18, the key is not how much it is right now. Because again, we're talking about long-term money, okay? We're talking about long-term money. This is long-term money, okay? Long-term money. Now, right at first, this didn't feel like real money, right? When I first got this, I was like, okay, silver coins and then when i got educated on it when i educated myself on it and i was like money right see that's another thing when you at vegas if you guys i've been to vegas and you guys go to like 
certain tables, blackjack tables, poker tables, um, Russian roulette tables, and you have these stacks of chips in front of you, you always see people do this. They make that sound, right? They make, they make that sound because that that is a very addictive sound because you know what? They are counting money. They know they got $50 chips, $100 chips. Right here, this is real silver, and this is long-term money. Now, granted, don't get me wrong. A brother loves some cash, right? A, a brother loves some cash, but this is short-term money. This is short-term money. This, I can go blow this right now. This, and matter of fact, if, like I said before, if I kept this money right here, if I kept this money right on my right on my desk here, next year, it won't even be worth anything. Oh well, maybe ninety something dollars. But that's the point I'm making. It will decrease. It would decrease in value. Why would I want to keep money outside of the bank? Where it doesn't increase in value, then why would I want to keep money outside of a high yield bank, right? Because right now you guys are with Wells Fargo, you with Bank of America, okay? You with Chase, you with U.S. Bank, and guess what they're giving you for your money? Nothing. Zero point zero one five, zero point two five. They're giving you a quarter on the amount of money. The banks I deal with. 2% and larger. Now, granted, I could probably drop 10000 or something, but guess what? The only amount of money that I have in my savings account is my emergency fund. It's my emergency fund. That's the only money I keep in there in case like, I fall on hard times and I have to just use this money that I have saved up. And what I tell people is, you know, yes, you want to have three to six months of all your expenses in your emergency fund, but a good goal to have is $10,000, at least $10,000. And some of you are like, well, if I save $10,000 and put into a savings account, then guess what? That's going to take me this amount of time and I won't be investing. Is there a key? Is there a rule? Is there some sort of method to invest and to save at the same time? It is. It really is. It depends on how much money you have left over it. And what we're talking about, your residual income, the amount of money that you have after all your expenses and your debt. That's what we're referring to, your residual income. So how much money do you have left over? And some people love to do the uh, 50, 30, 20 rule, the 50, 30, 20 rule. So going against the grain just a little bit, going against the 50, 30, 20 rule, I would say, for instance, if you have $500 left over, what would I do with $500 left over? First and foremost, if I have any debt, any credit card debt, any personal loans, business loans, any school debt, I want to pay as much as I can to the smallest debt first so I can get rid of that smallest debt. And this is called the debt snowball. Okay, this is called the debt snowball. Now, the debt avalanche, the debt avalanche is taking your highest interest rate and paying that amount down first. I like the debt snowball the smallest loan that you have, you pay on that until it's gone. And then you take that amount of money that you was paying on that one, as well as the minimum amount that you were paying on the second um, smallest loan and then paying that off. That way you have one less loan. You have one less loan that you have to worry about. And that, in, and that interest rate is, actually, is, is alleviated. Okay. You wiped it away. But when you do the debt avalanche, Okay, when you do, you take the highest interest rate, that necessarily could be one of your largest loans. And say if you have a loan for twenty five thousand dollars, but you have a loan for three thousand dollars, you can pay off that loan, that three thousand dollar loan, in one year. But that twenty five thousand dollar loan, it may take you a couple of years while you're still paying a minimum amount on your three thousand dollar loan. That's something you just don't want to do. You want to get rid of the loans quick as possible because that's one interest rate that you will alleviate, you will get rid of, okay? So if you have, let's say for instance, I'm just gonna write some notes down here. If you have a loan, let's say for instance, for $25,000, and then you have a loan for $3,000, okay? How long do you take, how long do you think it would take if you have $500 left over of your residual income for $3,000? Anybody, anybody can tell me. Can anybody tell me how long, if you had $3,000 in debt, how long would it take for you to pay that off? Can anybody tell me that? How long would it take you? 
it would take you six months. It would take you six months. Okay. It would take you six months because we understand that 500 goes into 3,000 six times, right? So, you know, say for instance, $500. So, in every month, so 500, that's one month. 500, that's two months. That's 1,000. 500, that's three months. And then double that. Boom. Six months. Six months, you will get rid of a $3,000 loan when your residual, um, with, your, with your residual income being, 3000 I mean, with your residual income being $500, okay? Let's, let's go a step further. Let's take, for instance, you have 25000 How long would this take you? Woo, 25000 25000 will take you 50 months. 50 months. Oh, yeah. 50 months. It will take you 50 months with the residual income of $500 to pay that off. To pay that off. How long would that take you in years? How long would that take you in years? It would take you around four years, four plus a month or two. It would take you four years to pay off a $25,000 loan with a residual income of $500 a month. So which one should you tackle first? Because I didn't even talk about the interest rate. So let's talk about, let's say the, 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 uh, $25,000 loan has a low interest rate at 10%, right? But the $3,000 loan has the interest rate at 24%. You know credit cards, 24%. You will be paying a lot more in interest percentage-wise, a lot more in interest percentage-wise with the $3,000 than you would with the $25,000 at 10%. Yeah, see, I tell people, you may want, you'll look at the hard numbers, Oh man, 10% of $25,000, a lot, a lot of money. You're correct. But with the $3,000 at 24% interest, you'll be paying more in percentage, which accumulates for that amount of money is more money over the course of time versus your 10% on your $25,000 loan. So it's easier and smarter to just alleviate your smaller loans regardless of the interest rate, because guess what? you wipe away 24% regardless of, of the amount of money because this is your smallest loan. You get what I'm saying? So the less loans you have, the less money you pay over time. But if you're going to go ahead and pay the minimum amount of $3,000 and try to tackle the $25,000, you still gonna be paying for years into that $25,000. While the $3,000, you could have paid off in six months. But now you're paying on the $25,000 and you're paying on the three thousand dollar, the three thousand dollars. So what you should do is pay the minimum amount for your twenty five thousand dollars, pay the minimum amount of your twenty five thousand dollars, and aggressively tack the three thousand dollars. Get rid of that in four to six months, and then the money that you were actually paying off that debt, you apply to your twenty five thousand dollar debt. Okay. Now, and granted, if you have five hundred dollars, and that's all you have, and you have a three thousand dollar debt, but you also want to invest. I would advise you to just hold off and pay off your debt first because it's going to it's working against your bottom line. But if you're just so eager, you want to jump in the market because you heard me say, you know, every day that you're not in the market, you're losing money, regardless how the stock market fluctuates. Then I would say, you know what? Do 150 or maybe 125. OK, if you want to invest a little bit of money, do 125, do 150, put the extra 350 to actually 375 and pay down your debt. Okay. And pay down your debt if you want to get some investments. And the investment platforms with that amount of money, I would tell you uh, go to Robinhood, that's free commission. Go to F Fidelity, that's free commission. Go to Charles Schwab, that's free commission. Um, go to Stash, that's really low, that's a dollar a month until you reach $5,000. Go to M1 um, Finance, that's free commission. Um, and also go to Acorns. I forgot the amount of Acorns because I really don't invest with Acorns no more because of the transparency, as I said before. All right, let me get into some of your notes. I have not ignored you guys. Let's see what you guys have been writing. Let's see. Miss Curly Girl, I see you have been busy. Hey, what's going on, Esco? Um, good evening to you. All right, let's read some of your notes. Oh, you're in Kansas City. Okay, okay, Esco. 
Uh, Esso says, I'm just a longtime investor, currently at $1.3 million. No business, just letting my money make money. That's what's up, Esto. Um, I'm I'm happy to see that you're at 1.3 million. I would love to see you just at 1 million. Okay, not 1.3 million. I would love to see you at 1 million because quite frankly, I would like the 0.3 for me. Give me the $300,000 so I can go buy this apartment building I'm looking at, okay? this I'll give you, uh, let's see, let's do the math. Amortization of a loan, amortization of a loan. Return on income at 300,000. Esto Jackson being a silent investor, 7%. I give you 7%. If you can give me 0.3 million, which is $300,000, I'll give you 7% on the loan, which would be passive income and rental property. All right, that's my business pitch. <laughs> Sheila, hello, uh, you're from Louisiana, that's right. I'm in the process of starting a commercial residential cleaning service. Are you serious right now? How about this, Sheila? I can actually get you in touch with somebody who actually does a commercial cleaning business. I forgot the name of the company. Not, not, not her company. I forgot the name of the products they use. But the name of the company is called RPI. The name of the company is called RPI. That's, uh, uh, see, RPI. Oh, Redhead Promise Industries. That's what it's called. Redhead Promise Industry. And they are commercial cleaning. And it's black owned. By the way, it is black owned, Sheila. So I don't know if you started it or you're getting started, but you guys can link up. And guess what? You guys can start a business, okay? You can go under another LLC. I don't know if you have a name yet, but it's called RPI. Um, they're not listed yet, okay? They're not listed. They're they're working in the background, but they are generating some income. They're starting up, starting from the ground roots up, and um, I can get you in touch with that person, okay? My email is in the description, but the name of the company is called RPI. That's Redhead Promise Industry. That's Redhead Promise Industry, okay? That's for you, Sheila. Isaiah says, I'm from New York. I mean, Newark, New Jersey. Woo, I've been in New Jersey. And let me tell you, I'm not talking about your town because none of this is our town. We're, we're from another continent. Mother Africa. Anyway, but uh, Newark, certain parts of Jersey, this was ugly. Now, granted, there's a lot of rich parts of Jersey I didn't know of. But when I went to Newark, I was just like, wow, this is rough. <laughs> now, I know, <laughs> this is me. I'm currently in the business of flipping diabetic test strips. Diabetic test strips. Huh. There's so many businesses out there. I don't even know. Thank you for listing your businesses. Like, guys, if you're starting a business, if you're in business, list your business so people can see what you're doing, see if you can link up, see if you can build a black um, um, you know, economy within your within your own communities, within this. It doesn't matter. You, we need to reach out, whether it be in Africa or in America, and do business with black people so we increase our income and we have fun doing it. We have been increasing organizations and businesses and people who do not deserve our money. We deserve our own money. So let's do businesses with one another. I'm reading along here. SO says, I have gold and silver. I believe silver should be higher in value than gold because it has more industrial and medical use than gold. I agree. Hey, Esto, and that's why your brother is rocking up on silver. I buy silver every two months. I buy silver every two months. I invest about two to 300 in silver every two months because eventually eventually silver is going to become more precious as we use more of it, right? Like you said, those those um, medical uses, as well as I spoke about earlier, I talked about them using that inside of solar panels, okay, inside of solar panels. All right, I'm moving right along. Miss Curly Girl says, I think silver is a great way to keep get, get kids started in long-term investing. I bought my nephew and niece silver for Christmas. You, you didn't buy me anything for Christmas, Miss Curly Girl. Did you buy 10 t-shirts, Miss Curly Girl, for Christmas? Okay, I need to list the other t-shirts that I've made up. Me and my partner, we made up the other t-shirts. I need to list those. All right, Esto says, silver and gold both have intrinsic value, $100 bills don't. Thank you. Thank you, Esto. That's my point. 
Short-term versus long-term money. Now, Esto, don't go out there and, you know, intrinsic. Let's keep it basic. Financial literacy one-on-one. Short-term, long-term. You see what I do here. The only thing about paper is it university means of exchange of goods and services that we currently have. Yeah, it's a note. It's a note. It has no value. It's a note. Remember when the dollar back in, was it 71? The dollar was backed by gold, right? It was backed by gold. And then Nixon turned the dollar into debt. Nixon turned the dollar into debt. He got a bunch of financial gurus and said, you know what? Let's stop decreasing the dollar amount with gold. We're, going, we're decreasing the gold value and we're decreasing the dollar because it's backed by it. Let's back the dollar by debt, by American debt. And that's why... I listen to Rich Dad when it comes to using debt as a vehicle, as an engine for cash flow for your income. Financial intelligence. You have to listen to people who are smarter than you or who know more than you who or who has more ideas than you so it can spark an idea in you. You need to listen to people who are more knowledgeable than you, who are smarter than you, who have more methods than you so it can spark an idea in you, right? Because I listen to I listen to all sorts of people. I listen to you guys and I learn from you guys. Again, this is not a lecture channel. This is a channel of exchange of information. I love when you guys are interactive. I love when you guys uh, put your put your business out there. I love when you guys talk to one another. Um, Miss Curly Girl, the, the email you have listed is um, wrong. Is <laughs> is uh, blacklogic28 at protonmail.com. That's blacklogic28 at protonmail.com, not Gmail. All right, so where we at? Uh, Original Redhead says, hey, Isaiah, flipping diabetic test strip. How does that work? I wonder, Miss, uh, Miss uh, Original Redhead, are you a doctor, a nurse, or a medical? Are you in the medical world, Original Redhead? Because... She seems as though, or he seems as though they actually know something about this field. See, when people ask questions like that, you have to be cognizant of, of what they know and what field they in. Again, Original Redhead says, hey, Isaiah, flipping diabetic test strips, how does that work? So I would think that the way that that person is either they know nothing about it or they are in that field. So they actually want to know how you're doing that so they can make some money. All right. Esto Jackson says the main thing is whatever you invest in, don't get in a bind and give it away to a pawn shop, which happens quite often in my town. It's really sad. It, yeah, it does. it's really sad, guys. That's really sad. Now, granted, talk. Let's let's talk about clothing. Right. Right now, you see me in an ascot and a polka dot shirt and a jacket. Now, this jacket is Perielis. OK. Early as I got the little, oh, wrong side. I got the little uh, um, flower here. Early as it, it was, it was tailored, not tailor made. <laughs> um, but some of you may think now this is not Italian silk. A lot of my suits are Italian silk, but there was only one hundred eighty dollars because I got them made in Korea. I'm very, very frugal. Now this suit, believe it or not, is from KNG. KNG and Men's Warehouse are made by the same people, right? This is a nice suit. Some people may even think this is a $1,000 suit, a $500 suit. I Believe me, I know millionaires, and when I wore one of my suits one time, they thought it was a $1,000 suit because it was Italian. See, I'm like, no, this is $180 in Korea. Now, this suit was bought in America, right? And the reason why I'm talking about this is because you shouldn't spend a lot of, you shouldn't spend a lot of money for your clothing. You can still look great. You can still look great, okay? My handkerchief falling. You can still look great and not spend a lot of money, okay? And not spend a lot of money. And some of you are probably thinking, you know, how much does how much this, does this get up cost? How much does this get up cost? It doesn't cost that much. It doesn't cost that much, okay? This giddy up doesn't cost that much. Do you know how much this suit costs? I'm going to stand up a little bit. Do you know how much this suit costs? Okay. Do you know how much this suit costs? Look at it. Look at the interior lining here. Do you know how much this suit costs? 
Anybody. You know how much the suit costs from K&G, the same people who own Men's Warehouse. Now, in Men's Warehouse, this same suit will cost you anywhere from $500 to $1,000. $500 to $1,000. I know I'm off topic. We're talking about short-term and long-term money. I haven't forgot, but I'm making a point here. Anybody, you know how much your suit costs? I'm just curious of what you guys um, may think. Okay? Okay, I'm just curious about what you guys may think. Oh, you good, Miss Curly Girl. It's cool. I'm, I'm, I, that, that, that is what I'm trying to get at, guys. You may think that I have a lot of money over here. I'm dealing with a lot of money. No, I'm very frugal. I want to be like Esto and have 1.3 million. But Esto, hopefully you heard my bid, man. Let's let's get in some business. Give me some of that money, bro. Give me some of that money so we can buy some property. We can do big things. Now, I'll be the face of it. You can be in the back still making money. Anyway, Esto don't hear me. Esto don't hear me. My email's in the description. <laughs> All right. Where am I at? Now, I'm still reading your notes here. Um, okay. So Esso says, Dave Ramsey, total money makeover is a good plan. Baby step two. I've took his financial piece university. I agree with you, Esso. Hey, Wayne Peterson. How you doing, brother? Uh, Wayne says, hey, uh, what's your thoughts on RIAs as a supplementary income? I know taxes are high on RIAs, but just wanted your opinion on them. Okay. I do RIAs through two entities. That's through Robinhood and well as Fundrise. I love REITs. Um, I've made good money off them. Um, I haven't received any money, to be truthful, because I've reinvested my dividends, all those properties. I love Fundrise because they remind me of Stash with their transparency. You always see the return, um, the, the, the amount of money that you have in. You always see the properties that they bought. You always see the percentage that you receive back from that property. So I love them when it comes to REITs, right? Um, you start paying more taxes when you cash out. You start paying more taxes when you cash out. But if you keep your money in investments, if you keep your money in investments, you pay less taxes. When you receive that 1099 DIV at the end of the year or the beginning of the year, rather, then you're not going to pay as high as tax if you were to cash out of that amount of money. So I really don't really worry about money because I keep my money in investments until I absolutely need it. OK, until I absolutely need it. All right. And granted, uh, by the way, this shirt right here, this polka dot shirt with the cool thing. KNG, 20 something dollars. Killing them, killing them. They think I'm walking around with a thousand dollar suit on that. Look at that brother looking good. You know what I'm saying? Nah, bro. So anybody guess how much this suit costs yet? OK, OK, OK. I saw some prices. Hold up. I'm getting to it. I'm still reading your notes. Uh. Esto says, oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I missed one. Uh, Isaiah Robinson says, it's a lot to explain at Original Redhead, but they have a few videos here on YouTube to break down the business model for you. It's highly profitable. It's highly profitable. Um, see, Esto says already there, six months, okay. Esto says, basically, you're increasing your cash flow, thereby giving you more money to save and invest, okay? Uh, we wait, Peter said four years, all right. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Sheila says, yes, you can look great and expensively. As always, shop for bargains for everything, especially if you had time to shop around. Okay, here we go. Here's some prices. This is interesting. Sheila says the suit costs 150. As the Jack says 459. Isaiah Robinson says 220. Uh, uh, Miss Curly Girl says 300. Hey, hey, Ashley Hawkins. Okay, well, thanks a lot. Okay, guys. Okay, I, I, I'm 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 laughing because a lot of you guys uh, uh, all wrong, all wrong. Okay, let, let me. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you a glance again at the suit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And it feels wonderful, okay? It feels wonderful. You even got the interior lining that's white, okay? Okay. So you gave your amounts. Sheila at 150, Esto at 459, Isaiah says 220, Miss Curly Girl says 300. The price I paid for this suit 
you know what? Let me, I got to do a little bit of math here. So excuse me, excuse me. And I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> this suit, I just did the math. This is stupid. So for the jacket and the pants, that's a suit. The jacket and the pants. So don't look at everything else. Don't look at the ascot because this ascot was only $13. Um, a real ascot is made out of silk. This is a blend of a little bit of silk and I believe some polyester. But it has uh, wickening in it, so it doesn't make me sweat. I doesn't get, get high from that. And then I got the flower. I got the flower. <laughs> I got the flower in a box from Amazon for $13 as well, okay? And then I say the shirt was $20. But just the suit, the jacket and the pants, which makes a suit, $73, brand new. KNG, $70, $73. Why is it $73? Because they say if you buy one suit at $220, if you buy one suit at $219, $220, you get two suits for free. You get two suits for free. So some of you saying you can't afford no suit, right? Now, granted, I paid an extra $47 per suit so that's your extra $150 to get them tailored, okay? So they're off the hanger suits, which is, this is different for me because all of my suits are tailor-made. Now, I'll give you the difference between a tailor-made suit and a tailored suit. A tailor-made suit is when they measure your thighs. They measure your hips. They measure your waist. They measure your stomach. They measure your chest. They measure your shoulders. They measure your neck. They measure everything. And that suit is tailored made for you. Tailored made, meaning that they tailored you to make the suit. They tailored you to make the suit. The flip side of this is when you buy a suit off the hanger, then you get it tailored. So you bought a regular suit, could be an expensive suit or cheap suit or frugal suit. Then they tailored it for you, right? It already didn't come in a certain size. They either have to let it out on the waist or the butt or in, or or cinch it in okay on the stomach so you have a sleeker look right so you don't so you don't look as big okay so that is the difference that is the difference okay so tailor made it was tailored you, you you got tailored and then they made it versus a suit that is being tailored where you just bought off the hanger and you got a tailor but these suits cost 73 dollars a piece 73 dollars a piece because they say hey man you buy a suit at 220 you get two for free I was like, oh, bet. The only problem is I had I had to pay hundred extra, $150 extra to get them tailored. Now, you know a tailor that's going to charge you less than that, but he did a really, really good job. He did a really good job on, these, on tailoring these suits. It fits like a glove. And I don't mean tight like a glove. I mean like a real comfortable, loose, like it was made for you glove. Like nice. I can run in it. I can move around in it. Hey, get money, get money. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I can do all those things. All right. Totally off topic. I just had to tell you about that in case you guys are looking for suits. Maddox says 180, 110. You're still off, Maddox. $73. Anyway. <laughs> um, that's how I met. Sheila said that's how I shop. Uh, you're cracking your own self up. Uh, I sure am. Uh, Money King Kivo says, wow, $73 for the suit. Indeed. Indeed. I need to get me one. No, brother. Get three. Okay, get three. And I'm going to tell you the three to get. You get a black, blue, and gray. You won't go wrong. Black, blue, and gray. It will fit in any arena, black, blue, and gray. All right, uh, let's see what y'all off. I'm gonna have to shop in KNG. Indeed, indeed, because even though you may have a lot of money, here's the thing, guys. When you have a lot of money, you don't have to go out and buy expensive stuff to show people you have a lot of money. You don't have to go out and show yourself that you have a lot of money. Be frugal with your money. Be frugal with your money, okay? All right, I'm reading your notes again. All right, y'all. Okay, so you have to shop at KNG. All right. So um, I, I know I'm a little over an hour here. I guess you guys are staying with me. I, I love chatting with you guys. So, Esto, what I need you to do, I'm not talking about the real estate thing anymore, but Esto, it's something I need you to do, brother. I need you to go out and buy 100 of my shirts. <laughs> I need you to go out. Buy 100 of my shirts, okay? I'm trying to I'm trying to sell some shirts so I can build another product. I got to get with a designer 
and I'll get with another financial expert. I want to start making uh, budget packages so I can um, send them out to people or email them to people. I want to make some bu budgeting packages, but um, I don't have the uh, software ingenuity to make them. Um, I have a simple version of it that I've pretty much pieced together from other financial entities, but I would like a, a more professional one for myself. And so that are what the t-shirts are for and the merch I'm, I'm going to start building in my Teespring store. Um, so that is what I'm doing with the money that you guys um, will buy the t-shirts for. I want to build products and guess what I'm going to do with that? I'm going to build products and depending on how the t-shirts do, when I, especially when I load more t-shirts, I'm, I'm going to, again, make that product and I'm going to send it out to people for free. And you know me, I had those credit letters for you. You request them through my email, which is blacklogic28 at proton, protonmail.com. What I am going to do is I'm going to uh, send those credit letters out to you totally free. Now, granted, I am going to make a transition here, okay? I'm, I'm going to make a transition here when it comes to my email address. Now, the email is already uh, being set up, but I have certain emails for certain reasons. I'm going to show you something if you can just bear with me. All right, so I have the first version of my business card, okay? So um, on a wide public stand, this is the first time I've, I've I had this for a couple of days now, but this is the first version of my business card, okay? So you guys get to see it first. So now you know my full name, you know my business, and you know my symbol, okay? There's nothing on the back. That is my business card and that is my business email. So if you guys want to do business, okay? Now, if you want to request financial information for free, you go to blacklogger 28 at proton uh, protonmail.com. If it takes me four, if it takes me more than five minutes, I'm gonna have to say, hey, drop $10, drop $20. But if you want to do business with me, this is my business email, okay? That's Ross World LLC at gmail.com that's ross world llc at gmail.com and that is my business number okay that's out of texas okay because pretty soon here within a year i'm moving to texas and my business will be running out of texas okay dallas texas all right so you want to mail something do anything with that that is where you go that number is 254-340-1371 that's ross world llc at gmail.com all right so oh, yeah, I'm really, these are really, really nice. My partner actually designed these. I had nothing to do with designing this car. She did a wonderful, wonderful thing here. This is beautiful. The only thing we're missing, and I know, is the little social media icons because I'm on Twitter, I'm on YouTube, and I'm rarely on Facebook, but at least YouTube and Twitter should be on there. But this is the first version. We're going to have a second version, which is fine. We're just starting off. We're just starting off. So we're building, we're building. Anyway, short term versus long term. Short term. Money, 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 money. Hey, money. This is short term. If you have it in your hand, this money is doing nothing for you. This money is doing nothing for you. It looks good. It even feels good. Hold up. Mm, it even smells good. God damn it, Jackson. Oh, this is Franklin. Hold up. Mmm, God damn it, Jackson. Now I got it right. <laughs> this was Franklin. Ben. But I'm not glorifying white men, right? I'm just glorifying what he could do for me. All right. And uh, whenever, uh, if you guys ever get some Harriet Tur Tubman money, I would just love to see Harriet Tubman on American dollar because I would just save it. I would just save it, okay? It will definitely be a, a, a family heirloom. I will just pass it down. I will just keep it. I'll spend some of it too. But anyway, I will I would love to see that. I don't know if they have started making her tell me money yet. But this is short-term money. Outside of the bank, outside of investment, this is not going to make you any money. And a matter of fact, you're going to decrease it by 3% every year by having this money in your pocket, by having this money under the bed. You need to have it in a high-yield savings account or in investments. This 
is long-term investment. This is long-term investment. This is silver, right? And as Esso says, silver should be worth more because they have more medical uses and more industrial uses. I agree. Remember my class on precious metals and I gave all the uses for gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. We're talking about real stuff here. This is financial literacy one-on-one. I'm Rossworth. And we're talking about long-term and short-term. We're talking about passive and residual income. And this channel is not a lecture channel. This channel is an exchange of information that we have a forum that you can come and learn the basics of money and grow hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. Hundreds of thousands and also millions of dollars. That's what we're talking about here. I'm back into it. I'm reading your notes. How much is the t-shirt? The link is in the description, as uh, as though the t-shirt is only $24. Okay, the t-shirt is only $24. They're, they're fairly inexpensive. Isaiah says, is there a website to buy that shirt? No, I, I actually went to the store. I went to the store. Uh, let's see here. Thank you, Miss Curly Girl. I appreciate that. Esso says, nice business card. Thank you. Thank you, Esso. I appreciate that. Greetings from Florida. Okay, Wanda. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. I appreciate I appreciate your comments. I do. I really appreciate your comments. Soon to be Harriet Tubman. Okay. All right. Wait a minute. Is Harriet Tubman coming on a $20 bill or the $100 bill? I thought it was a $5 bill. I thought it was replacing or in addition to Lincoln, maybe it was a twenty dollar bill. Someone, someone, let me know with Harry Tubman coming on the twenty or the hundred dollar bill. Uh, Wanda circulating circulation. Okay, uh, let's see here. I'm going to start investing in silver. Good, good. And the website I go to, uh, Wayne. The website I go to is Apex. That's A P E X. A real reputable site. I already did a research. This is the silver I received. This is this one two. And see, they don't give you this. You have to do this yourself as far as the way you keep them. I keep mine. I, I I went out and I bought these for Amazon, right? I bought these from Amazon and I, I have another capsule and I label, I have a label maker. I have a label maker and it says one ounce silver American Eagle Bouillon, B-U. I labeled this myself and I bought these myself. They don't give you this, okay? Um, I have, this is the American one. I put this all in one and I have also the Canadian one. So I just dropped them in here. And I, that's how I save them. And I put this in my safe, okay? That's what they're made for, okay? Put them in my safe. Now, I'm going to fill this up. And I have, have silver from Canada. And I also have uh, some old-style Roman silver, right? It's all beat up. Um, has, I don't know, Marcus Aurelius or somebody on them. I don't know. Someone Roman or Greek, for all I care. Long as, it, long as it's making me money. Okay, $20 bill. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Isaiah and Esso. Thank you. The $20 bill. Thank you, Wanda. $20 bill. Okay. Um, Sheila says, I'm also grateful that I found your channel, Ross World. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you found it too. I mean, can I get the 10,000 subscribers? Are you letting your family members know? <laughs> A brother putting in work. Now, granted, I know that I don't come on every day. I know that I don't come on every day. And it's a reason for that. The reason for that is I have two full-time jobs. Where do I find the energy? Where do I find the time? Well, when you're working for someone else, you need to have purpose. My purpose is to start my own real estate, start my own uh, other buying businesses. But this is what I'm building. So I'm working hard for somebody else so I can work hard for myself one day. I'm working hard for someone else so one day I can start working hard for myself. Okay, that is what I'm doing. That is my long-term thing. And I don't mind it, right? Because you got to start somewhere, okay? Um, back in school, when I really thought about my degrees, my master's degree is in occupational safety and health. And I really should have got an MBA because I'm business-minded. I'm business minded, And a lot of stuff that I learned on my own, I would have learned through a coursework. And I probably would have started being an entrepreneur a lot earlier, but I didn't. All right. And my buddy, uh, I'll say his nickname. He's from New York. I talked about him before. He's a millionaire. His name is Gigi. When we went to college, he went back and got his MBA. He went back and got his MBA. And now he got into uh, real estate. He got into buying investment stocks and startup businesses. 
because he understands the business of it because of his MBA. He got a lot of knowledge from that. And he's a millionaire today, right? He's, he, see how old is Gigi? I think Gigi is either 39 or 40 and I'm 41. And so he's already a millionaire. Okay. I'm a thousandaire. I'm a thousandaire. I'm not a millionaire. I'm a thousandaire. Esto is a millionaire. Okay. Um, a millionaire, in my opinion, is someone who has a million in the bank, a million plus in the bank, or whatever they have, a property or whatever, they can cash out of it and it's equivalent to more than a million dollars. That is what a millionaire is to me. And quite frankly, that's what a millionaire is to most people. Okay. That is, that's what a millionaire is to most people. All right. Moving right along here, guys. Yeah. Buy silver from www.apex.com. Miss Curly Girl, you are on it. You are, I'm telling you, you are on, hey, hey, wait till I get it started. You keep putting in work like this, Miss Curly Girl. You keep putting in work. You may fall under this brand one day. You keep putting in work. Or you, if you have a business, hey, we can do business. That's all I'm saying. You putting in work. I love it. Um, see, Wayne Peters told my mom about you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad you told your mom about me. Isaiah Ross says, absolutely. You got the white fist. Uh, they have a they have a black fist. You got to hold the black fist, and then you have to circle over to the black fist. They don't put the black fist first because it's so strong. The black fist is so strong. Esso says, got to grind before you shine. I know that's right. Damon Johns, Rise and Grind. There's a book. <laughs> Uh, okay, she put another link back in there. Okay, guys, I'm I'm up here. Um, I've been up here an hour and 20 minutes. I see that you guys. Hey, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, and comment, and share. Do all those great things. If you don't like the video, don't give me a thumbs down. Just leave. <laughs> if you don't like the video, just don't give me a thumbs down. I hate thumbs down, okay? I love thumbs up. I'm just being real. If you don't like it, you don't like what you're hearing, just leave. But if you do like it, go and give it a thumbs up. And then some of you say, well, if I give you a thumbs up, then that thumbs up video goes in my save videos. Then delete the video. I still get the thumbs up. You probably don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway. All right, guys. If you guys don't have any more questions, uh, if you don't have um, any more comments, then I'm going to have to leave you because um, I'm going to watch football tonight with some friends I haven't seen in a very, very long time. Okay, because I work so much, I finally got some time off here. Um, a matter of fact, the day after Christmas, I'll be flying to Dallas um, uh, for some rest, some for some rest, some um, relaxation, and maybe even deal in some business while I'm there. And I, you know what? I, I'll go live from Dallas a couple of times. I'll go live on the go. Hopefully, I catch most of you guys that come in. Hopefully, I catch most of you guys, but. We're going to continue to talk about money. We're going to continue to talk about investments. We're going to continue to talk about businesses. There you go, Maddox. See, Maddox got the black fish. Yeah, baby, baby. <laughs> hey, hey, Isaiah, I think he's trying to outshine you with the black fish, man. Hey, don't let him do you like that. <laughs> don't let him do you like that, man. Um, let's see. Esso said, I definitely promote you, brother. I appreciate that, Esso. I appreciate that. Um, he said, okay, I have two businesses. I know you do, Miss Curly Girl. I, I, you on it. Believe me. You may be on it. You keep working hard like that. When I get a payroll, you may be on it. You may be on it. I'm not a liar. I said, you may be on it. But believe me, you are a hard worker. I can tell already. There you go, Maddox. Finally, Maddox is promoting me. Thank you, Maddox. Hit the likes. I don't know what the cat is about. Uh, the cat. Ain't no but the cat in me. No. No, but the dog in me, yeah. Because that's what you have to handle your finances, your finances like. See, I'm glad you put that cat in there, Maddox. I'm not trying to beat you up about it, brother. But listen to this. You got to be a dog with your finances. You got to treat your, your, your finances like a bone. You know when a dog got a bone, he go, he can't let it go, right? I can't. That's how you should be with your finances. You should be, you should be uh, uh, grade A. You should be blood sucking on your finances. That's the one area of your life that you can control. Two areas of your life you can control. Two, your health and your wealth. Okay, they're 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 simonious. They're intertwined. You can control both of those entities. You can control your health. And your wealth. Now, granted, this is not a health channel, but I do comment on health every now and again. 
Okay, I'm somewhat of a vegetarian vegan. I only eat meat on special occasions like uh, maybe a, a birthday or a holiday. But quite frankly, majority of the time I eat meat one time this month. I eat meat one time. We had a get together. I eat meat one time this month. And I'm uh, on my vacation. I'm already planning to eat some of them Texas ribs. If you ever had some smoked Texas ribs, ooh, they smoked them ribs for 10 to 14 hours. They are so delicious. I got to have it. But most of the time, I don't eat meat. And the reason why I don't eat meat um, is because if you do your research, meat is a class one carcinogen, just like cigarettes. Meat is a class one carcinogen. And not, not, that's not just based off documentaries that I saw. I actually did the research and it's true. So if you know somebody who has throat cancer, who have never smoked a cigarette a day in their life or been in a fire or any of the above, you ask them if they ever ate meat because meat passes through your throat. So meat is a class one carcinogen. So I eat more fruit and veggies and I drink more water. That's why sometimes you see me up here drinking water. I always got a big water jug. And matter of fact, I'm getting thirsty. I've been talking for an hour plus. So I'm always got the water. on hand this is some good water too but spring water this is a gallon and it gives me a little it gives me the time where i should drink at 7 a.m to 7 p.m okay 7 a.m to 7 p.m there's a bottle of joy and I, and I mostly drink water i mostly drink water and yesterday i had my first drink in a month okay i had a bottle of um i have a glass of scotch i just had one i just had one glass um the only time i really turn up eat meat and I drink alcohol is doing special occasions. Now, some of us, we may have a hard day at work. We want a glass of wine. I'm not against, you know, drinking. I'm just against you becoming an alcoholic. I'm against it. You highly indulging in those things. Okay. I, I do them in very, in, in, in uh, special moments, so to speak. Okay. But anyway, I'm off the health. I'm talking about wealth. So again, I'm going to Dallas the day after Christmas, um, mostly for rest, and, re and relaxation and i may do some business but i will come um come to you live and i don't know what you guys are doing for new year's okay i don't know what you guys are doing for new year's but me and my lady me and my girlfriend me and my woman we're going out and we are going to uh party okay i'm gonna have some drinks i paid a lot for these tickets okay and this 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 setup right here you may see this same setup during new year's because I didn't go anywhere today, guys. I went to work and I came home, okay? I went to work and I came home. That's all I did, okay? And I put this on to see how I look. And Miss Curly Girl said I look great. So if Miss Curly Girl said I look great, you know, then I look great. So I may wear this. This is still brand new. I just unbuckled all this. I just threw this on today, okay? I so said, you know what? I'm going to go on live. I never wore a suit live before, so I'm putting it on. So you may see the same giddy up during New Year's Eve. All right, I may come to you live. All right, I'm reading your notes. Uh, Chinese symbol, okay. Uh, Money King says, I'm trying to be on the payroll too. <laughs> okay, Money King, if you're trying to be on the payroll, what is your skills? Tell me your skills. That's what I need to know, your skills. Esso says, slow and steady wins the race. You're planting seeds to harvest the crops later. Indeed, I am. Thank you, Esso. Well, you're a philosopher, Esso? I need a philosopher on my team too. <laughs> and a full-time job. I'm a case manager with the housing authority. Okay, great. Housing authority. You can teach me a thing or two, Miss Curly Girl. You can teach me a thing or two. Look at Esto. You're doing it. I know that's right. Wayne Peterson, I'm going uh, vegan and vegetarian 2020. Meat makes me feel... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay. Listen. Listen. Okay. Okay. Please. Uh, Wayne, don't do the whole New Year's resolution. Do it now. Do it now. Okay. Plan when you're going to eat meat. That's how. That's see. Some people are like, oh, you can just go cold turkey. No, no, no. Plan when you're going to eat meat. That way, you you won't like like me, right? I said, okay, me and my coworkers are getting together, so I'm gonna eat meat there. I haven't ate meat all month. So I'm gonna eat meat there. I'm gonna eat a little bit of meat. I'm gonna eat meat there. So I ate meat there. Right. And then I'm not going to eat meat until I go to Dallas. I may eat meat twice. I'm in 
primarily is going to be ribs. OK, <laughs> I just love their ribs, but I'm planning to eat meat. That's going to help you from stop eating meat every day for every meal. OK, every day for every meal. That will help you. You got to plan it out. But start today, Wayne. See, that's like investing. Oh, you know, 2020, I'm going to start investing. Why are you waiting? Don't wait. Money doesn't wait. Your health doesn't wait. Money doesn't wait. Neither does your health. All right. Uh, Isaiah says, know your limits. Okay. Money King said, I can't, I can't stay meat free. I got to have my ribs and fried chicken. Money King, fried chicken is killing us, brother. Fried chicken is killing us. I, I don't know your health, but let me tell you something about me. I'm 5'11". I'm 250 pounds. And my blood pressure is 118 over like 80 something. And when I go to a doctor, they say, oh, you, you're in shape, you're fit, but you're heavy. I say, yeah, I know. And I'm still trying to lose weight. But look at my blood pressure, brother. And I'm not saying you have high blood pressure. But when we eat fried chicken and ribs all the time, then our blood pressure is going to be skyrocketing. Your fingers will start getting numb. Your joints are going to start going bad. You're going to have arthritis and all other sorts of ailments. Please reduce your meat intake. Uh, that's just my advice. I mean, I can't tell you what to do, but I love you, brother. I love you. I love my black people, okay? And I want us to live long and fruitful. I want us to be 70 years old, still walking around talking trash. I know I do. I want to be 70, still cracking jokes, still talking trash, still making money. Uh, Wayne Peter said, I understand, I understand uh, Money King. Well, Wayne, you need to listen and heed to my advice as well. Um, Esther, you need a nice hat to uh, set that hat off. Esther, I was thinking about a nice hat. I really was thinking about a nice hat. I really was. And I thought about it, but this bald head, man, this thing look, you know what I mean? You, you cut it fresh. You're like, yeah, man, I'm up in this piece. Yeah, because I'm a sweater too. I sweat a lot. So that's just going to add more clothing on me. Uh, I need, uh, no, I read a lot of books, okay? Wear it again. She said, wear it again. I know that's right. Uh, no better than time now. Maddox, I did mine on Black Friday. That's what's up. That's what's up, Maddox. Um, Miss Curly Girl says she can teach me. Wayne Peter said, thanks for us. Well, thank you, Wayne. I appreciate it. Um, she just says um, to, towards Miss Curly Girl, I only eat seafood. Giving it up is hard for me. Now, Sheila, you're doing a great thing because every now and again, I eat seafood too. Okay, I eat seafood too. But we need to understand that anything that bleeds, um, anything with a head on it, actually can cause us and give us cancer. Now, granted, everyone's going to say that, yes, everything gives you cancer. But if you can reduce or eliminate, so you can reduce the chance of you getting uh, uh, cancer, then you should, right? Because there's a lot of things in your health that you can actually control. There's a lot of things in your wealth that you can actually control. And getting out of debt is one of them. All right, Money King says, I agree with you. Well, thank you, brother. Well, agree with me and start to apply the technique of planning to eat meat, okay? And, and here's the thing. Start off with eating meat once a day. Not your bacon and sausage. If you love breakfast, then have your meat then. Then here's another thing. Now, it's kind of tough at first because you're looking for recipes for like lunch and dinner, okay? You're looking for recipes, but I eat, I eat a lot of wild rice. I eat a lot of uh, beans, like black beans and uh, chickpea beans with uh, rice and guacamole. Um, I eat a lot of like spring mixed salads, but mostly like spinach, kale, arugula, and chard. I eat that. I eat nuts. I mean, I, I can go in my cabinet and just pull you all types of stuff out that I eat. I eat oatmeal, um, almond milk. I don't do dairy products. I, my cheese is veggie cheese. My cheese is veggie cheese, and it's quite good. The, the brand I like is 365. That's the cheese I like. It's veggie cheese. And then, oh, case in point, the burgers that I eat are beyond meat. Now, they are plant-based burgers that taste like real burgers. They fry like real burgers. They taste like real burgers. Now, granted, it's still processed, but it's plant-based, okay? It's not your real beef. That's going to, you know, when you feel, eat a burger, you feel heavy in your stomach, not these. You can eat a plant-based burger and feel just fine. And they taste like the real thing. And I also have plant-based sausage. I, you know what? I'm just going to show you. How about that? I'm just going to show you. I'm 
I'm just going to show you. How about that? This is my breakfast sausage. That's what I eat. Plant-based. And it tastes like the real thing. It tastes like the real thing. I, we didn't went from we didn't went from wealth to health. <laughs> so if you're tuning in, this 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 uh, segment video was about short term and long term wealth, aka uh, passive and also uh, passive and residual income. Okay, I'm gonna do a recap real quick for people just tuning in, so we're not totally off topic. So residual income. This definition is coming from Investopedia.com. Residual income is the amount of net income generated in excess of the minimum rate of return. Alternatively, in personal finance, residual income is the level of income that an individual has after the deduction of all personal debts and expenses have been paid. So basically, residual income is the money left over after you pay all your bills. Okay? After you pay all your bills. Now, passive income. Passive income in this Definition is coming from Wikipedia, which I verified it. It's a good definition. Passive income is the income that requires little to no effort to earn and maintain. It is called progressive passive income when the earner expends little effort to grow the income. Examples of passive income includes rental income and also business activities in which the earner does not materially participate. All right. And, which, and also investments. OK, I'm going to go with 10. Very briefly, because I already went over this, guys. 10 passive income sources. Selling information products, okay? Selling information products. Rental income, rental property. Affiliate marketing. When you allow people to market on your YouTube channel, on your Facebook, those you see all those marketing stuff, you can get paid from that. Peer-to-peer -peer lending. That's from prosper.com and lending.com. When you invest $25 or more and you get a you get a rate on your return, okay? Your ROI. That's peer-to-peer -peer lending with prosper.com and lendingclub.com. Dividend stocks. When you buy dividend stocks every three to four months, they pay you dividends, okay? And and my advice will, for you is to make sure those dividends are be are being reinvested. Now, right now, stash stash doesn't have that option. But Wellfront does. Um, a lot of my investments are with Wellfront. I do have a stash portfolio as well. Savings accounts. Savings account. When you're putting your money in a high yield savings account, you re you get interest on that money. Okay. And I'll tell you right now, a high yield savings account is not with Wells Fargo. It's not with Bank of America. It's not with uh, JP Morgan. It's not with Chase. And it's not with US Bank. It's with those banks you hardly hear about that you actually have to go out and research. I have a couple of videos on high yield savings bank, but granted, they change almost every month. That's a, that's why I always come out with different videos about high yield savings. Okay, high yield savings bank. Right now, I'm with Brio Direct. That's B R I O Direct, and they fall under the Sterling's Bank brand. All right, REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust. I invest with Fundrise. I just invest my money through Fundrise. They're transparent about the properties they have bought and the rate of return that you will receive. Um, based upon the amortization of that property. And then what happens from there, they uh, uh, forward you those dividends within your account. You make sure that your account is on reinvest dividends and they reinvest it. And then you compound on your dividends. Bonds. Bonds, another way of passive income. You buy some bonds and anywhere from one to 5%, you accumulate on that interest. Rent out a room in your home. Rent out a room in your home, whether your basement or a room, you can go through Airbnb and other platforms to rent out a room. And that's another form of passive income. The only risk in that is that you may not trust the people or they may damage your property or do whatever. But people have made a lot of money off of Airbnb. Last but not least, advertising your car. Go to your local business. Go to a big business and say, you know, I wanted to advertise for you guys. You can put whatever you want to put in my car as long as it's not permanent, right? Um, but how much would you pay me a week? How much would you pay me every two weeks? If that's a route, that it's an actually good route to go because the only thing you need to do is go to work, go to a grocery store, do the regular chores that you do, the regular routes that you go, and you're advertising for that company, and they're going to pay you money for that. So that is what we're talking about, okay? That is your residual income versus your passive income. Now, we also talked about short-term and long-term money, and I gave a, a, a brief description of what I believe is that long-term money is stuff like precious metals. Okay, long-term money is stuff like precious metal. 
gold, silver, platinum, platinum, where once you buy it, you hold it, and it, it increases in value over the course of time, okay? Then short-term money is your notes, aka your bills, aka your dollar bills. Once you take money out the bank, it has no value. It, it only has the value of the current day markets. It only has the value of current day markets because we understand that if you have money in stacks like this, right? You have money in stacks like this, okay? You have all this money on your table, people flashing money. This, does, this, have, this doesn't have any value except what it is. This doesn't increase your money. And quite frankly, here's a great time for me to input my T-shirt. Short-term money like cash dollar bills doesn't make you money, okay? My money makes money. That money right here is not going to make me any money. That money that I have right here is not going to make me any money. It's not going to make me any money at all. It's not. It's not going to make me any money at all. That's why this money, oh, well, this money is going back in my safe. I just like to keep some money on hand just in case. The Holocaust. <laughs> Get out of runaway cash, whatever you want to call it, okay? Whatever you want to call it. I had that money for that. Anyway, that's short-term money that you don't even need to have. All right. Um, I've been up here quite a time, guys. This is the longest video yet. So I think I'm going to toot my own horn and I'm going to get out of here. If you like this video, please like. If you like this channel, please subscribe and share. Let your family know about it. I would love to give this information. I would love to help more people. Thank you, Ms. Curly Girl. Thank you, Maddox. Thanks for all my uh, curators and moderators that is helping this channel out. I do appreciate your hard work. Believe me, I appreciate your hard work. I just want to tell everybody, if I forget to tell you, if you celebrate Christmas, have a Merry Christmas. Um, have happy holidays. Have a happy New Year. All those things. Yes, you're still going to see me. I'm not just because of holidays going offline. Yes, your brother is still going to bring you some financial information, or we're just going to have a conversation about what's going on. We might even do a tour in Dallas. Who knows? Who knows what the future holds? We might just do it. Okay, we might just do it. I'm gonna read some of your notes, and I'm gonna have to get out of here um, because I don't have nothing else to do except for five o'clock my time, which is West Coast. Um, I'm going to see some football games with a couple of friends I haven't seen in a very, very long time. So let me make sure I'm not missing none of your notes. Um, let's see. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Miss Curly Girl says, I only eat poetry and seafood. I'm trying to get off poetry, but it's hard. Yes, please get off of poetry. Do your, do your research on poetry, Miss Curly Girl. They're doing a lot to the chickens. Um, even organic chickens are not made for us to eat. I'll just say that. I don't want to go into great detail. Uh, what else we got? Uh, da, 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 da. Um, she hate me says money making Ross. Well, thank you. She hate me and money making. Um, go in the description of this video and buy one of my t-shirts. I know I'm peddling these t-shirts. I want to build this product for you guys and give them away free. Now, granted, if you have issues with your credit, if you have issues with student loans, if you have uh, issues with pay deletion, I have those letters for free. I give away stuff for free. Any wealth that I generate, I love to give it away for free for people uh, who may not have the money. If you have the money, buy the t-shirt. If you don't have the money, don't buy the t-shirts. The t-shirts are $24 and the spandex are uh, $45, but it looks great. Um, the link is in the description. And Miss Curly Girl, thank you for putting that out earlier. Um, so Jack said, I only eat English muffins for breakfast. <laughs> okay, English muffins. Okay, cool. Um, I would I would tell you this, Esso. Every morning I eat an apple. Okay, I eat an apple. I go work out, and then I'll come back and I probably have some eggs and potatoes or something like that. They give me, the, you know, because people don't know people like they hate carbs, but carbs. Um, your brain need carbs. That's why I don't really do keto no more. Um, talking to a few scientists, also doing some research. Your brain actually feeds off of carbohydrates, so you actually need carbs. You can get carbs from your English muffin, but we understand that fruits. Um, your blackberries, your strawberries, your lemons, your limes, uh, um, your apples, they give you antioxidants and they also give you minerals, okay? So I would encourage you to do a fruit with your breakfast as well. Um, Wanda Wisdom says, it's sad to fast from solids on the day of the week you were born on. It has helped me feel better and my friends is only eating meat on one day of the week. That's pretty good. Tuesday um, is ruled by Mark. Is well, Wanda Wisdom, you got me with that. It's ruled by my, I'm not really a huge in astrology. So I won't mention, I won't um, really speak on that one. Isaiah Robinson says, uh, I'm going to say the messed up version of this. 
quinoa. <laughs> now people used to say it, but it's quinoa. Quinoa is good too. I replace oatmeal with quinoa. Yeah, but you know what? If you get some really good oatmeal, like organic oatmeal, that's not bad. You know, um, every now and again I eat oatmeal uh, to supplement quinoa. You really have to do a lot too. Some people, if you just do quinoa with salt and pepper, for me, it's not good. But if you got to do quinoa with like salt and pepper and, and um, smoked paprika and also guacamole, then it starts tasting good. You have to have to do a lot of things for quinoa. And quite frankly, if you guys are thinking about at least going vegan three days a week, four days a week or vegetarian, there's a lot of Android and iOS apps. That's Apple apps. That's for vegan. I have an app on my phone. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you the app I use. I actually have two apps <clears throat> that I use. Okay. Um... One is called Vega Mecom. Vega Mecom. I, I think I should just spell it right because that's horrible what I just get the name I gave you. Okay, the way you spell this app is V E G A M E C U M. That's V E G A M E C U M. That's the one that gives me recipes, delicious recipes. If you go to my Instagram page, okay, if you go to my Instagram page, you will see a lot of food that I make. You won't really see any meat. And the meat that you do see is probably beyond meat because I, I do ground beef beyond meat. And I do burgers, but I don't even eat that all the time because that's also, even though it's plant-based and there's no meat, it's, it's made out of plants, it's also processed. So you have to watch that as well. Now I have another app on here. I uh, don't want to bore you with semantics. But um, that is the um, app that I actually use. Let me go to over to Instagram real quick, guys. I'm going to post my link in the description. I think I have it in the bottom as well. So you will always see my Instagram I use for health. I, my Instagram I use for health to show you guys. So you can check out my Instagram page and you will see food all over the place. Uh, um, anytime you see meat, it may be mushrooms, it may be ground beef, it may be all sorts of things. And Instagram, I take a lot of personal photos, but most of them, most of my um, Instagram photos are food. Um, usually it's uh, uh, food that I've eaten, like purple potatoes, brown potatoes, eggs, crab cakes. If you see something that looks like meat, it's probably just ground up plant based meat, um, a squash. I'm looking at my like uh, sea sausage. Those are these sausages that we went over. I'm gonna have these for breakfast tomorrow because tomorrow's Christmas Eve. I'm gonna eat that maybe with some uh, some home biscuits or something. You see curry. It looks like beef in it, but it's not. I always give the description. Here's another thing. I always give my recipes in here as well. Um, another breakfast I love to eat are my Fuji apples with my uh, Medul dates. That's Fuji, Fuji apples with Medul dates. They're delicious. I love to get the medul, medul dates, those. Um, you'll see all sorts of dishes on here. Something that look like meat is not even meat. Um, you may see fish, and that's probably the biggest of them. You, but you will go on my Instagram page. You will see a lot of personal photos of me and all the food that I actually cook and eat, okay? All the food that I actually cook and eat. I'm just getting hungry looking at some of this. I am getting hungry. Anyway. All right, guys, um, I just want to thank you guys for staying with me as long as you have. Hopefully, I have been more informative than entertaining. I say again, I hope that I have been more informative than entertaining. And I said this before, I'm about to read your notes and I'm getting off, okay? So you guys can go live your life and I can may have a beer tonight. I haven't seen my friends. I haven't seen my boys in a while. So I might have me a beer. And I'm going to have me some pho, vegetable pho. Now, I don't even get meat in it. I tell when I buy my pho at this restaurant, it's not a, we're going to the casino, but we never gamble. We just, the food is good. That, in Washington state, that's the culture here. They actually go to the casinos to eat and gamble. Some people just go to eat and we go there to watch sports and we're going to eat. But I get my pho, they'll come with the regular Brussels sprouts and uh, the, the mint leaves. But I'll get carrots, I'll get peas. And I'll get broccoli and and bean sprout and, and the mint, okay? And I'll put that all in my pho, and I'm eating vegetable pho. No meat at all. All right. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, Wanda Wisdom says, but the rumor is saying to really research where those IBs derive. Some are saying 
human meat. Google fetus, not to scare you, but study. Okay, Wanda Wisdom. <laughs> Esso says, I may try that brand myself. It's pretty good. Uh, Beyond Meat is pretty good. You also have Impossible Meat, but they haven't reached the stores yet. You can buy Beyond Meat um, from Fred Myers. I think they are in Safeway now. I don't know about Kroger or Food Lion. And I don't believe they're in Albertsons yet. All right. Anyway, Wanda Wilson, detoxing every seven days is great too. Burdock root. Yeah, burdock root is good. Burdock root is good. Um, and matter of fact, I'm going to show you, I'm on a cleanse now. I'm showing you all my stuff. All right. So every couple of months, I go over uh, to this guy's website. He was a follower of Dr. Sabi. He was a follower of Dr. Sabi. And his name is uh Jordan. Jordan sells food, okay? And this is what he got, mucus remover, and this has actually helped me. I'm not lying. You know, I'm not even telling it. I'm not selling it. So I'm giving you the one um 100% gosh truth here. This stuff <laughs> I can breathe out of both of my nose now. It took time cuz you can ask anyone. I'm always stuffy. But I haven't been stuffy lately. And I'm going to tell you the ingredients here. Uh, I can't pronounce some of this. So please excuse me. Anamu. A-N-A-M-U. Bitter orange. Mulan. Tea. Spirilla. Or, or sour spirilla. Elderberry. Chanka pepper, And red clover. That's in this one. Okay. Maybe I should have shown you. I don't know if you can see that. I'm sorry. Number two, this one is called the Natural Iron Power. Uh, it says a proprietary blend of burdock root, okay? Uh, Wanda Wilson, burdock root, um, yellow dock, elderberry, sarsaparilla, and hydrogen root, okay? And this one is called the Natural Iron Power, and those are the ingredients. So I know what you're talking about. Your brother's up on his health game, okay? That's and I number mine, so I know what number I'm doing. See, I label everything, so I know how many I'm taking, what order, and all that. Another one is called the Natural Energy Booster. I'm gonna tell you what's in this one. You got Quasa, that's Q U S S I A. You got Nettle Leaf, and you also have Sapo, S A P O. Um, you have Nettle Leaf and Nettle Root, and you have Chapara, C H A P A R R A L. And you have valerian and hydrogen root. And that's your natural um, energy booster, right? And that is the blend you have. Those are the blends you have, okay? And I'm not affiliated. I'm not associated with Jordan Cell Food. I'm just giving you because I want to put it out there and what I'm doing. And this is not from uh, Jordan Cell Food. This one is actually from, um, where did I buy this from? E uh, Etsy Etsy e, uh, E T S um this is a uh this is black owned and Jordan is black owned too Jordan Selfu is black owned okay that's why I went with him and also et this one is black owned okay this one is black owned as well um this is called Herbal Cell Food Plus and I bought this off of Etsy the the owner and maker of this is uh is a uh, black owned okay this is certified organic and I'll tell you the ingredients bladder rack Okay, bladder rack, average sea moss, um, got livia leaves, nettle leaves, and burdock root. I got burdock root all through my system, okay? So burdock root, I got it. And also nettle leaves and nettle root and bladder rack. And I did my research on this, so I'm not just taking a bunch of crazy stuff. Okay, FYI, I'm not just taking a bunch of crazy stuff. Health and wealth, yeah, you said it. All right, this next one is calcification calcification uh buster calcification where calcium builds up in your body calcification buster okay and this one is made out of hydrogen root casara casara and sagrada and red clover you spell that c a s c a r a then the other one was s a g r a d a and red clover okay 
And those are the ingredients. All right. So I gave you the food I eat. I gave you the supplements I take. And I also take a uh, one day of vitamin, all natural, all day. All my products are all natural. If anyone knows me, so my lotion, um, I deal with this African Best Oil is is mostly all natural. But my lotion is either made by, was it Shea Butter or uh, what's the other one I use? Shea Butter is another brand I use. I'm sorry, I forgot, but that's what I use. And I also use all natural deodorant. That one is made by Tom somebody. I don't know, but it's all natural. All my products I use is all natural because you have to understand this. Anything that you put on your skin will eventually end up in your body. So when you're using Dove, yeah, I used to use Dove. I used to use Axe. They smell great. Look at the ingredients. All my ingredients will say a scientific name and then will say aloe vera plant. It will say a scientific name, then it will say lemon root, right? Because that is what it is. They just have a professional name, so to speak, then they have the real name, okay? So I like to use natural products on my body. I use the natural products in my body. I don't like to take I don't like to take medicines from hospitals and pharmacies unless I absolutely have to. When I had shoulder surgery, I was taking pain. I took pain meds for two days. It's supposed to have been for, for eight days. I couldn't do it. It made me feel loopy and weird and funny. i like, nah, I ain't taking this mess. I just endured through the pain. But anyway, again, for the third time, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to read your notes. And regardless of what you guys say, I'm getting off. Okay. I got video games to play. I got reading to do. I got uh, places to go, people to see, all that good stuff. All right, let's see here. Let's see what you guys got. Um, Sheila, you're welcome. Another good on Ross. Love your channel. Okay, Esto, thank you for being here. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you for all your information. You guys have any questions, you got my email, uh, pro, uh, blacklogic28 at protonmail.com, and also rossworldllc at gmail.com. Wayne Peterson says, great content. Once again, thanks. Well, thank you, Wayne, for attending. Uh, thank you for putting out the information again, Miss Curly Girl. I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough. Yes, and matter of fact, you, oh, this is the last one. Maddox, Maddox, this is the last one. <laughs> tofu, brother. Tofu, okay? Tofu. Um, there was some research that came out about tofu um, early on. They said that it has that it actually produces a lot of estrogen for men. It really doesn't. You have to do your research and do a deeper dive. It doesn't produce estrogen in your body. FYI, but tofu, organic. Anyway, I'm reading your notes. Moving on. Oh, you're drinking tonight? I'm going to have a beer or two, Miss Curly Girl. Don't judge me. You know I'm transparent. I can't lie to you guys. I can't lie to you guys. Um, I see a Ross in Black Sea Oil is good, too. I, I'm not going to my bathroom to get my black seed oil. I'm not doing it. I have all the stuff you guys are talking about. You need to get on your game and get on your money game, okay? Uh, I was trying to be rough. I can't, I'm, I'm not a rough guy. <laughs> Beyond Meat is in Kroger too. Okay, cool. I use black seed oil every day. I used to put it in my smoothies and stuff. I have black seed oil. Um, you can't put too much or go crazy. I also use apple cider vinegar as well. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, same thing. I heard of Herbalistic Kareem. That's how I found out about Black Seed Oil. Yeah, Herbalistic Kareem, I think he has a YouTube channel. I watched it. I saw some of his stuff. Um, I love his channel. <laughs> that is it. Okay, thank you. Video games, yeah, I play Madden. I play Mortal Kombat. Ain't nobody gonna beat me in Madden. I'm telling you, I kill everybody in Madden. I'm, I'm one of the top 100,000 people in the world. <laughs> I'm playing man to talk 100,000. Like that's like that's something. Um also I play uh Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. Uh what else I play? Oh, and I play Red Dead Redemption 2. This is not a video game, guys. What are you guys doing? Don't do this to me. I'm trying to get off. I was wondering if you put that in your pho. Well, I don't make pho myself, but I I've had General Tao. When you go to a, a Chinese restaurant, look to see if they have General Tao tofu. It's delicious. General what I do with this though. See, there's different ones. You got firm and you got extra firm and you got soft. With this, I can do this like eggs, 
Okay, if I don't want to eat real eggs, but I love real eggs, I might give that up one day. But you can do this like egg seasoning or whatever. You can do like um, other stuff as well. I'm hitting my mic and everything. All right, I got all my stuff out here. Nothing's in the refrigerator or cabinets because of you guys. <laughs> LOL, Blaine Maddox, he did it. <laughs> all right, guys. This is Financial Literacy 101. Uh, we talked about short-term and long-term money as well as passive and residual income. And we also talked about health and wealth. All right. So I'm your host, Ross Rowe. Uh, Thank you guys for attending this long session, which is the longest to date. We're coming up on two hours. We had a great time. I've never done nothing this long, but you guys made an absolute joy. Thank my moderators, Maddox and Miss Curly Girl. Thank you for your input and your support. I can't thank you enough. And Esso, thank you for all your information. Um, Wanda, thank you for your wisdom. Wayne Peterson, thank you for your truthfulness. Sorry if I can't name everybody. But at the same time, there's a link in the description that you can email me for financial information, for financial letters, for debt and all that. But most importantly of all, you will get 20 minutes of advice. If you buy one of my t-shirts, you take a picture and you email me. You take a picture of yourself in the um, email or you can just take a picture of the shirt and send it to me. We'll set up a time and date and I will give you 20 minutes, totally free advice, um, get, help you get out of debt, help you start investing, help you start to save. And Esto, we got 1.3 million. I need you to buy at least 10 shirts, okay? 10 shirts. Uh, within the next week or so, I will be uploading more shirts. On, right now, I only have the black shirts with the Ross World logo on it. My money makes money. But if you look at my last previous two videos, you will see other variations of video of shirts that I will be bringing out. Again, I thank you all. I love you guys. Uh, stay strong. Invest your money. Save your money. And during this holiday season, don't let nobody stress you out. Don't try to spend too much money of people you don't like. Again, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. And I'll see you guys pretty soon here. I'm out. Probably tomorrow.